And we're headed back to New Orleans, where Christian is about to turn the drab to fab with a headboard DIY that is sure to turn heads. And Christian, I can't wait to see more of this beautiful house. It's gorgeous. What room are we in now? Well, you probably don't recognize this room, Tracy, because you haven't been here yet. But this is technically the Tracy Moore guest suite. Ooh, okay. That makes me very excited. I can't wait to, like, take a load off and put my luggage down and enjoy my room. So let's talk a little bit about this space. So the back room is kind of a smaller room. But we wanted to have a really cozy guest experience because we knew once we moved to New Orleans, all our friends would want to visit. So I took inspiration from boutique hotels, where they often have small rooms but giant comfy beds. And I decided to make a headboard from wall to wall to enlarge the space. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried to source an eight foot long headboard. It's really not that easy. Um, and going custom was gonna be very expensive. So I thought, wait a minute, I'm the DIY guy on City Line. I should be able to do this, right? So if you're at home and you want to follow along and make this headboard, this is what you need. You need one set of curtains or a couple of yards of an upholstery fabric of your choice. One piece of one by six lumber that's eight feet long. Seven pieces of six inch round foam sliced in half, eight foot long. Three pieces of one by four lumber, 40 inches long. <laughs> four yards of batting, some three quarter inch wood, screws, scissors, a staple gun and staples, a screwdriver or drill and some Velcro strips and you are ready to go. How do we start this project, Christian? Now, Tracy, I know it sounds like a lot of pieces, but it's actually a really simple project to do. So the first thing you're gonna do, I'm gonna move this out of my way for a second, is you're gonna grab your fabric or your curtains. So I use curtains because you know you can actually get more fabric for cheaper in a curtain than when you buy custom fabric. So, and the bonus, your headboard will match your curtains. So you're gonna grab your fabric and you're simply gonna lay out your wood and sort of pre-cut all your strips. So if you're doing six inch bolsters like I did, which are easy, you're gonna need 18 foot wide strips just so you can easily cover it. So I would recommend cutting all your strips ahead of time, which I did. We're gonna do eight in total, but here's one of them. So you can see just a really simple strip of fabric. Easy, okay. easy. Up next, you're basically gonna like build it backwards. It's almost like, how did they get the caramel in the caramel bar? <laughs> Um, this is how do you get the batting together? You're speaking my language. He's speaking so, chocolate. Lay, mm. <laughs> right? Lay down your fabric. Next, you're going to lay down your batting. We're basically building like sort of a padded headboard. So batting you can get often in craft stores. Quilters use it. It just will soften the edges from the foam. So just line that guy up with it. Done, done. Next guy, foam. Mm -hmm. So this is six inch bolster foam. They often use it for upholstery. I actually ordered it online, and when you do, you can ask them to slice it in half. So it's half rounds, ah. even easier. Last step is you're gonna grab your wood. Now I just used some rough lumber because it's gonna be completely hidden. So now we've basically made our sort of like headboard sandwich. You're gonna wrap up and pull up your batting first, just to get it nice, like that guy. And then we're gonna pull up your fabric. So we're basically wrapping our round basically. Staple gun. Now you're gonna start in the middle and you're actually gonna go down one entire side. Mm. I know when we talk about like doing other upholstery fabrics, you often go back and forth. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna do that in this one, Tracy. So you're gonna go all the way down so that you basically can get, oops, missed one. You get a straight <laughs> line. Do the other side, same concept, pull it over. And you're just gonna make sure you're pulling it nice and taut and staple all the way down. You're gonna do this seven more times, or you're gonna get your kids to do this seven more times for you. <laughs> Put that guy down. The magic of television, I've got one done. Oh, lovely. So you can see the back is not perfect, but no one's seeing the back, Tracy. It's going against the wall. So your wall won't be bothered. Yeah. So there's one, grab another one. So you're basically gonna do eight of these guys eight of these guys if you want the same height I did, nice and tall, lay them all out, and then you're gonna grab some one by fours. You just want the one by fours to be the same length as all your rolls added up. So then you're gonna put one on each side. 
That's not going to balance for me today. But about 12 inches from the edge. Balance for me, please. And then you're just going to grab some one and a half inch screws. Grab your drill and you're just screwing right into the back of the wood tray. See? But you're basically going to put in one screw onto each panel and then it will be built perfectly. Last step, you're going to install it to your bed. So if you've got a metal bed frame, you can actually screw in the bottom of these right to your metal bed frame. And then my last trick is I take some little Velcro strips and I stick them right at the top and right against the wall. That way it keeps it nice and flush and hugs the wall so you don't have that mm. banging headboard, Tracy. Oh my it. goodness, that is so good. Easy peasy and under $100. And inexpensive. That would be so expensive if you tried to source that and buy that. So super simple steps to a beautiful and rich looking headboard that looks just perfect in the Tracy Moore room, I must say. Christian, thank you. <laughs> I thank you for the DIY, but mostly thank, thank you for you. my room. And thank you for letting us into your New Orleans oh, home. Anytime. It's gorgeous. <laughs>